So, uh, Mr. Chris Devona, thank you so much for taking the time for this interview. Sure. I'd like to know first about uh, what you're doing in Google, and then we're going to ask you some questions about what you covered in the presentation today. Sure. Uh, well, I, uh, I run Google's open source programs, as well as a couple of other jobs that I have at the company, uh, which means I'm tasked with everything from ensuring license compliance with open source software licenses, as well as uh, making it easy for Googlers to interact with the outside world at mm -hmm. a technical level. Mm -hmm. with these open source projects. Mm -hmm. so, and we do that a lot of ways, through releasing code, through helping out different projects that matter to us, and okay. that kind of thing. So. All right. So first off, I'd like to know about the open source study that you came up with, and you, you covered it in your speech today. Sure. And the major findings that you came up with, and why do you think they're relevant? Okay. Well, first of all, it's funny. That study was done uh, almost 10 years ago mm -hmm. um, by MIT, uh, Sloan School of Management and uh, uh, the Boston Consulting Group, okay. Kareem Lakani, who's now at Harvard Business School, uh, did it. Uh, we helped him with that, helping interact with the people who were on SourceForge uh -huh. at the time, because I, I worked for the company that ran SourceForge back then. Anyway, so uh, we really wanted to get an idea of why people did open source software development. So mm. we just asked them, yeah. like, what motivates you? And we gave them a lot of choices. And what overwhelmingly uh, came to the top was that people want to become better computer scientists, they want to become better at their jobs, they want to build skills. Mm. Um, and, and many of them also identified, a third of them actually, identified with the ideas that you know, we were all in this together and that we should all be helping each other out by releasing code mm. so that we can make all of our lives better. Mm -hmm. right, so it was pretty, pretty awesome to learn that. 44% you know? was curiosity more than skills improvement. What, what do you yeah. say about that? Well, I mean, you know, I think people get into computer science uh, and get into computers in IT mm. um, because computers are interesting, you know, because yeah. you can make them do things, and, uh -huh. and you can see if you can make it repeatable and and, and sometimes profitable. So uh -huh. it's pretty neat. Okay, a major part of your presentation was pictures about Google 11 years ago. Sure. Why did you choose to? Well, it was 11 and 10 and 9 and 8 yeah. years ago. Um, so I showed those to show people that we've been using Linux from the start. Mm. That you know Linux was a conscious choice and mm. also unconscious at the same time, and that it was natural for us to use Linux and open source. Mm. And why would we want to st stand in the way of that as a group? So. Mm. So how does you, Google use open source? Well, you know, we use it, uh, anytime you go to Google, you're using a Linux machine. Mm. Um, you know, that's where all the software runs on top of, is on top of a Linux kernel. Uh, the software that we build is built using open source tools like mm. GCC and Python. Mm. And then um, we combine open source software libraries, OpenSSL, Zlib, you name it, mm. and we mix them together with our code to create Google. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. open source is part of the entire process mm -hmm. of software development at Google. Okay, so the final question, we'd like to know more about the Summer of Code. What mm -hmm. is it and uh, what about the student participation in it and what are the major interesting um, maybe outcomes sure. that, that uh, came up? So uh, the Summer of Code is, is probably uh, something I'm, I'm most proud of mm -hmm. that my group works on. Um, we started this six years ago okay. and we wanted to come up with a way of uh, giving back to the open source world that has given us so much mm -hmm. uh, software to use. and. Um, one thing that I personally had noticed over the years is that I hadn't been seeing a lot of new open source developers mm. showing up at the same conferences that I would go to or in the same forums that I would go to. And so I thought, well, why is that? Mm. You know, why aren't there more students taking part in open source? Mm. Or am I just being myopic? You know? yeah, yeah. And so we looked into it and we decided we would try to incentivize students to do this over the summer mm. as opposed to getting a, a, another job. And so we uh, teamed up with uh, a variety of open source projects, GNOME Foundation, Apache Software Foundation, Python Software Foundation, and mm -hmm. people like that. And we said, what if we gave you students? What would mm -hmm. you do with them? Mm -hmm. And they're like, oh, well, that would be great. We could have them do some stuff. And from that came the Summer of Code. Mm -hmm. And the way the Summer of Code works is actually pretty simple. Uh, a student will apply uh, to, a, to a project, not to Google, but to a project, mm -hmm. saying, you know, I, I want to do this thing, and here's why I'm the person to do it, mm -hmm. you know, in this time period. And if they're accepted, and, and only about one in six applications are accepted. Mm. Um, it's about 1,000 students each mm -hmm. year. If they're accepted, though, they get paid $500. And then when they make it to the midterm, which is about a month and a half later, if their mentor thinks they're doing a good job, they get paid another $2,250. Mm -hmm. And then at the final, again, if the mentor thinks they've done a good job, mm. they get an additional $2,250. Okay. And so multiply that by 1,000 students, you know. There you go. And they create, on average, about 3,000 lines of code each for an open source project. Mm. And it's, uh, it's pretty exciting. 
So do you think money was the incentive for students to participate or their willingness to probably prove their skills? Or what do you think? Why was the amount of participation that, that impressive? Well, you know, we joke that they do it for the t-shirt. <laughs> but I think the, the money helps them mm. have the freedom yeah. to take on this kind of uh, unusual sort of internship, mm. right? So um, we sort of see the money as just helping students out and helping them sort of mm -hmm. get over that, that sort of hump. And then, you know, I think the real service that we bring them is introducing them to the people in the open source world and giving mm. them a structure in which they can thrive. Mm. So it's pretty exciting. So you gave us some stats about the level of participation in the uh -huh. different countries. Can you briefly mention them? Sure, well? yeah. So there's a couple of things. First of all, we have an 81% pass-fail rate. Okay. Um, so that means we're failing 19% of the students. Uh -huh. um, and what failing means in the program means you don't get paid. Uh -huh. So you can fail at the midterm, you can fail at the end. It's okay. usually about half and half. Okay. And um, so, yeah, and then this year we had 105 people apply, 105 five countries mm -hmm. represented in the application pool and about, I think it was 98 actual con countries that mm -hmm. took part. Mm -hmm. And then, um, yeah, so over the six years we've, I guess, handled about 1,800 students mm -hmm. and uh, maybe a little less than that because we started smaller. Mm -hmm. And then we've probably released about 18 million lines of code. Mm -hmm. so okay. That's pretty good. That's quite impressive. It's, pr it's pretty amazing. Yeah. yeah. No, we've all been pretty surprised at how successful it is. Any now. next steps uh, about that program? Well, yeah. So we just opened up applications for organizations to take uh -huh. part in what we call the high school version of it called Google Codem. Okay. And what that is is uh, students, again, all over the world, can take part and what they do is they do much smaller tasks mm -hmm. and they're both uh, coding and documentation, website maintenance, system administration tasks for okay. these projects. Uh -huh. So they come up with much smaller things for them to do and mm -hmm. we set high school students off on it instead of college uh -huh. students. So high school, uh, so under 18s. Uh, okay. And then, because Summer of Code is 18 or over only. Mm. And because of that, we're able to get to a much younger demographic. Mm. Um, and that people who maybe haven't even heard of open source before, mm, mm. but they want to do something exciting for their son with, with their winter break, mm, you know. So, mm -hmm. so it's pretty interesting, and so that's going to launch pretty soon. So. Okay. Now we wish you we wish you the best of luck. And thank you. Thanks for this interview. Well, thanks for thanks. Uh, having me. Thank you very much.